So today, let's talk about this figure in the right and how it works. Pretty simple, but I'm going to go through some details and it's important to know all aspects because you know, never know what the examiner may ask you and they do ask very specific details of radiation devices. So right here is a traveling wave accelerator tube. So it is important to be able to pick this out, whether it may be a actual physical, tangible traveling wave tube they show you in a picture, or if it's just like a diagram like this, it could be either one. Notice how we have these little coils in the middle of the tube, and we don't have any side pockets like normally we do in the standing wave. So now how does it work? And that's where things start to get hairy because there's a lot of physics that goes into here and you have to decide and do research, figure out what you feel comfortable going as deep into detail as you can, but you don't want to get too far into details because the examiners will let yourself or will let you dig a hole for yourself and that may be hard to get out of. So uh, typically what I tried to do was go in a good amount of detail, but don't say absolutely everything I knew. And I didn't say anything unless I was absolutely sure it was correct. Even if I was a little unsure, my goal was to know enough that even without that bit of information, I didn't need it to pass. That was, that was my personal strategy. Maybe you, it will work for you, but you have to decide on yours. So first of all, the direction of the electric field flips every half wavelength. So I'm going to put electric field flips a half wavelength. And the electric field is slowed by the discs in these tubes. So you see there are a lot of discs. Those slow the electric field as it's passing through. Now, the entire structure resonates at the same frequency. So I'm just going to, I'll put tube. Tube resonates, R-E-S, that'll be uh, meaning resonates, same frequency. And this is made of copper. So uh, good to know what it's made out of. And the reason it's copper is because there's a high electrical conductivity and it loses less power per other metals. And the idea is that the electrons that are bunched are going to be sent and accelerated by a negative electric field wave. Uh, accelerates with a negative electric field wave. And one, I believe it was Karsmark, mentioned that a traveling wave accelerator tube is like a surfer riding a wave. So if you've got a wave and a certain, say you got a little surfer guy right here. Well, when he is on a negative here, he is going to get pushed forward. If he's on the other side, he's ended up going to get slowed down. And if he's in the trough, he's kind of just going to end up sticking there. And so the negative waves are like when the surfer is right here on the end and he's going to be accelerated forward. So the acceleration of the electrons only happens in one of four cavities, unlike standing wave accelerator tubes, which typically happen in a one for every two. So because of this, the traveling wave accelerator tubes must be longer. Tubes are longer. So when you're comparing the two, it's important to know that one, they are longer, and that is why they are longer. It takes more cavities to accelerate the electrons, the same amount. And then at the end, there is a dummy load that prevents reflected waves. So unlike the standing wave, where you want that wave, that electric field kicked back and to make those standing waves, you don't want that in the traveling wave. So some more kind of random facts are typically tubes can get up to one meter. So they're, they're pretty long. The first few cavities here, 
these vary in size and the discs slow those electric field patterns. They make the resonant cavities. The electrons are gathered and bunched in the beginning of the tube. The uh, megawatt power fed into the tube via the wave, wave guide on the gun side. So that's where the tube is fed in and it's on the wave guide portion of the electron gun. And then the electric field reverses every half cycle. So there are four cavities per wavelength. So it's really important to know the main differences between traveling wave and standing wave accelerator tubes. Know that normally we use standing wave because they are shorter. We want less time or less room in the treatment area to be taken up. That also allows you to have a smaller head, more clearance, and it is typically what all the, all the major Linux use uh, to my knowledge, specifically varying machines definitely use standing waves. But it's important to know the differences between these two. If you got any other information, feel free to comment below. If you got questions, put it below. But this is really where I would read Carsmark. No pretty detailed info, but you don't need to go insane in the physics. And also when you're answering, watch what you say, because if you slip something up or try to go too deep into detail, they may keep asking you questions about a specific detail and they really will let you so let yourself dig a hole. And you certainly don't want that within your exam. So I hope this you found this useful. Uh, there is another video on standing wave accelerator tubes. Feel free to watch both of these, compare, and then you should be prepared for the exam if you get one of these questions. So if you have anything else, we will help where we can. Comment below. Thanks for watching and best of luck studying.